Hello and welcome back to my channel, Love From Taryn. It is a joy to have you here. Um, I hope you're excited for today's video. I know I am. We are looking at the chapter 5 of our Esther Bible study, Bible study with me. Hi cutie. Jasper's going to come join us until he gets bored. <laughs> which, which looks to be already... Oh no, don't play with my cable. No, 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 no. So yesterday we are jumping into our next chapter. Do not go back to the cable, darling. Um, chapter 5. Um, following classic soap devotional like we have for the past few videos, which by the way, if you haven't seen, go check out. I'll put a link in the corner there. And if you don't know what soap is, I've got another video which explains that as well. And again, I'll chuck that one in the corner. So you can go have a look at that one if you don't know what I'm on about. Uh, without further ado, and before my kitty starts doing things he shouldn't be doing, let's get into it. So it looks like Jasper has officially exited the room, uh, which means hopefully less interruptions, but sadly less kitty. <laughs> in any case, um, before we get into the word, we always want to start with prayer. It is such an important step that shouldn't be overlooked because it just preps us, our, our mind, our spirit, everything to receive from the word of God. So before we get started, I'm going to pray. Of course, you are welcome to pause the video and say your own prayer as well, but to kick it off, I'm going to pray. So, Lord God, we thank you that we get to come and we get to study your word. We thank you for your scriptures. We thank you for the wonderful woman of, the, of God who is Esther. And we thank you that we get to read about her story and be inspired by her bravery and her just desires and heart for you, Lord. We thank you for your word and we pray that as we read today, you just reveal yourself to us through the scriptures. Help us to see how you're moving in her life and how you can move in ours. In Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, so with prayer done, we move on to S, which is scripture. So we are going to jump in and have a read. Esther's request to the king. On the third day of the fast, Esther put on her royal robes and entered the inner court of the palace, just across from the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne facing the entrance. When he saw Queen Esther standing there in the inner court, he welcomed her and held out the golden scepter to her. So Esther approached and touched the end of the scepter. When the king asked her, What do you want, Queen Esther? What is your request? I will give it to you, even if it is half the kingdom. And Esther replied, If it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet I have prepared for the king. The king turned to his attendants and said, Tell Haman to come quickly to a banquet, as Esther has requested. So the king and Haman went to Esther's banquet. And while they were drinking wine, the king said to Esther, Now tell me what you really want. What is your request? I will give it to you, even if it is half the kingdom. Esther replied, This is my request and deepest wish. If I have found favour with the king, and if it pleases the king to grant my request and do what I ask, please come with Haman tomorrow to the banquet I will prepare for you. Then I will explain what this is all about. Haman's plan to kill Mordecai. Haman was a happy man as he left the banquet, but when he saw Mordecai sitting at the palace gate, not standing up or trembling nervously before him, Haman became furious. However, he restrained himself and went on home. Then Haman gathered together his friends and Zeresh, his wife, and boasted to them about his great wealth and his many children. He bragged about the honours the king had given him and how he had been promoted over all the other nobles and officials. Then Haman added, And that's not all. Queen Esther invited only me and the king himself to the banquet she prepared for us, and she has invited me to dine with her and the king again tomorrow. Then he added, But this is all worth nothing as long as I see Mordecai the Jew just sitting there at the palace gate. So Haman's wife, Zeresh, and all his friends suggested, set up a sharpened pole that stands 75 feet tall, and in the morning ask the king to impale Mordecai on it. When this is done, you can go on your merry way to the banquet with the king. This pleased Haman, and he ordered the pole set up. Because he's a wackadoo that wants to kill people. But, you know, we'll get into observations in a sec. And that sec is now. So, jumping into observations. What do we see? What's going on here? Um, as usual, I have my lovely little book, which... I amazingly recommend because it's awesome. I want to read the rest of his stuff, actually. This is Focus on the Bible, Ruth and Esther, There is a Redeemer and Sudden Reversals by David Strain, um, which I love and I've been reading through Esther. 
obviously. Uh, my mum's also borrowing it and she's reading through Ruth and she is also commenting how great it is. So I'm really keen to read the rest of his works and I definitely recommend that you have a look at this. I will put a link in the uh, description box below, probably just the one to Kurong because uh, you all know that I am obsessed with Kurong and spend way too much money there. In any case, I'll check the link down there. But we are going to jump into observations, which is both my own and my lovely friend David's. Feels odd. I've been doing like academic writing, so I feel like I should be like, and strains, because in academic writing you only ever refer to them by their last name. But this is not an academic writing piece. So it's important to note where we're coming from. So obviously in chapter four, we've just had the revelation that to, like to Esther that the Jews are all going to be killed and she's gone okay fast with me and I will go see the king if I perish I perish or if I die I die um really great chapter obviously and this is what follows directly after and as it starts it opens with on the third day of the fast so you can see that Esther as well as her maids and all of the Jewish people have been preparing for this moment you know there's been that lead up there's been that leaning on God and being like Lord whatever the outcome here I trust you if I die I die if I perish I perish I'm trusting in you so she's prepared for this moment and she's come forward and she stepped into the throne room of the king now if you'll remember there is a heavy chance that the king doesn't want to see her and she's just going to die. In fact, my book mentions that um, in that like time period and everything, there was the king's like throne and then like right behind it was actually a big dude with an axe getting ready to kill anyone that comes into the king's presence without, you know, any invitation. So Esther stepped in and she can see the king and right behind him, the massive dude with the axe. And she's just like, Lord, please let me stay alive. And as we can see, um, the king extends his scepter, which gives her permission to come in and is saying, you know, you're welcome here, which is amazing because instantly that is what her most immediate threat, you know, like I, I need to save my people. I need to do God's will, but there's a chance that I could die before even getting the chance to ask anything. So after praying, after seeking God, she takes that risk. She steps into the throne room and her life is saved in that moment. Obviously, there's a Jewish, you know, death that we've still got to deal with. Looking at Esther and looking at this chapter through the lens of Christ, because you might not really notice when you're reading it, but there's actually a bit of a um, duality, a bit of a... What's the word? Mirroring. There's a bit of a mirroring here between Esther and Jesus. So I'm going to explain that a little bit more, again, with the help of my book, because I'm not smart enough to think of these things on my own. So I'm just going to read direct for this one, even though I tend not to, because he just words it really well. Esther's story is a shadow of the one to come who does far more than she. Esther wins favor and is spared on just condemnation. But Jesus, who was not guilty, was nevertheless made the object of divine wrath and was condemned. Esther lived, but Jesus died that we might live. Esther merely risked it all, and Jesus actually gave it all. And he did so not simply for us, he did it instead of us. He died the just for the unjust to bring us to God. Something else that I find kind of interesting here is that she's been like invited into the throne room and everything. And personally, I'd be like quaking in my boots, um, being like, okay, I could die and not even get a chance to talk to the king. But instead of letting fear rule her, she stands firm in the fact that, you know, God's on her side. And then as she steps through and the king's like, I'll give you anything you want. She really in that moment could have been like, great, because I'm about to die because this dude Haman's trying to kill us all. But instead she goes, if it pleases the king, come to a banquet I'm going to throw for you. Which is always so interesting to me to think about because, I mean, there was your chance. But instead she waited and she was like, no, 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 come back tomorrow, you know, come back this afternoon and we'll, we'll talk about it then, which I find kind of interesting. Now you'll see when we get to, um, verses six through seven, that while they're at the banquet, the king is like, all right, come on, like, you got to tell me what it is that you want. And Esther's still like, come back tomorrow and I'll tell you then, which... I kind of started thinking like maybe she was scared, which is fair because she's sitting with the king who could easily kill her and his number one right hand man who is the man that's trying to kill her and all of her people. So I think maybe she's chickened out here. But David has a 
amazing observation that I really wanted to point out with you. And that is that she is actually in the position of power here. Like the king is like, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want and I'll give it to you. And Esther, who, as we mentioned back in, I think, video one, was originally like a lowly peasant girl. She was a foreigner. She was a woman. All things which in that time period, in that place, in that context were bad things. She now has more power than the king, essentially. And he is desperate to find out what she wants. And essentially they're eating out of the palm of her hand. So that's a really interesting just reversal of those roles and how even though in worldly terms Esther might not have had any power to start with, by the providence and the hand of God she has been elevated to such a high position. Now the last thing I want to chat with you guys about is obviously the Haman's plan to kill Mordecai part um, because that's an important part, takes up like half the chapter and we haven't gotten to there yet. So what is this? What's going on? It's a really interesting contradiction. Contradiction? Contra... Nope, the word is gone. See guys, this, like I can picture my grade 12 Macbeth study and I can see the word, but it's just not there in my brain. So as we've chatted about, Esther is wise she has gone about this whole thing with the wisdom of the lord you know like she's she's ready she's she's taken those steps and then on the other hand Haman seems like the right fool like oh all this amazing stuff is happening for me but it means nothing so long as that Jew is there and it's like bro how dumb are you like you are being honored and you can't let this one little thing go so when we when he talks about like setting up the Poland stuff and you'll see as we continue to read that Mordecai is not the one that is uh put up there but a certain someone else this this 75 70 foot pole is actually a monument to Haman's ego like he thinks that he is all that he thinks he is the cat's pajamas which is an expression that should be used more but in actuality he never had the power in this situation he had manipulated the king's power to get the decree to, you know, go and kill all the Jews. But ultimately, it is God who is in power and God who is in control. And his power is flowing through Esther, not through Haman, which is just a really interesting thing to note. And also, before we move on, I just want to chat about his friends and his wife real quick. If your friends, I know this is an application, but bear with me. If your friends are encouraging you to impale someone, please find new friends. It's just not okay. So now that we have gone through O for observation, we are jumping onto A for application. So in this chapter, as we saw, they're going to a banquet and Haman's upset. How does this apply to us? Well, I am so glad you asked. Pretending that, you know, you actually asked and not me just asking myself, but hey, that's how we do. So something that this chapter highlights is that God loves to hear the cries of his people. Not like, oh, I enjoy hearing them cry, but like the fact that we're crying out to him, you know? So they've gone through this three-day fast in preparation, not just Esther and her maids, but all of the Jews in the area have fasted in preparation for this. And God has heard their cries because God actually cares what you think. God cares what you're feeling. God wants you to turn to him, to cry out to him. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you have to wait until your entire people's going to be, you know, mass genocided. But even the little things, God cares and God wants you to talk to him. So maybe you had a rough day at school. Maybe you are really struggling in some area. God actually wants to hear about that. Heck, he even wants to hear about your wins. What good happened in your day? cry out to God guys because that's what he wants like he wants that personal relationship with you when you step into relationship with Jesus it's actually a relationship like everyone thinks it's this religion that's full of rules but in actuality it is a loving relationship with a father who adores you who created you who who sent his one and only son to die for you so what he desires from us is relationship. He doesn't want that distance between the two of you. So cry out to him just as the people did in Esther. And following on from that, if you really believe that 
that God is Lord, God reigns, God is sovereign, then pray boldly. You know, he has the power, like, like read the Bible, right? It says that he has the power to move mountains. He has parted the seas. Like he has brought the dead back to life. This is a God of miracles and he likes hearing from us. He wants us to ask him things. So pray boldly. You know, it says that as that faith as small as a mustard seed can move a mountain. Where, where are you exercising your faith? You know, are you reaching out with those far-fetched prayers? Because yes, I too, all throughout high school would pray, Lord, help me sleep well tonight. Lord, help me pass this exam. But those are such measly prayers in comparison to what we could be praying. Lord God, I pray for my school. I pray that it's not just my friend group get, that gets saved. This is my entire grade. That is my entire class. My entire school gets saved because our God has that power. You know, like maybe your youth group is actually really small right now. But pray into it. Pray that there is going to be a life-changing encounter and that that youth is going to double. Pray that, that that broken bone is going to be healed and restored in Jesus' name. Pray that that cancer flees. Pray whatever is on your heart to pray because he is a God of power. And just as these Jews and all of these people in this story had to pray boldly that the Lord would save them, we can pray boldly that he steps into our situations and our circumstances. Now, when Esther stepped into that throne room, that was a big risk that she took, but it paid off and instead of losing it all, she actually won it all. And I think that is so interesting because she stepped out in a risk because that's where God had led her, you know, that he'd put her in that position to be taking this risk. So I got to ask you, what position have you been placed in that you need to take a risk in? Because it's not necessarily going to end in a loss. It could end in a win. And yeah, risking this is scary. But if you have faith in, your, in the Lord your God, then what is there to fear? He has already won the victory. And I know that as humans, we still get scared. But you need to push on in spite of that. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Because we cannot let that fear win out when he has given us a sound mind. As we live and we trust in God, he rewards us. You know, all our needs are met according to his riches in his, in his goodness because he loves us so dearly. You know, it says in the Bible, um, if your kid asks for a bread, do you give them a rock? How much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to his children? And that's the thing, he actually loves you so much and he wants to pour out that love and he wants to give you good things. He wants to give you gifts. And if we follow where he is calling us, he will reward us. It's biblical, guys. So when we're taking those risks, when we're stepping out of our comfort zones, we've got to remember that so long as we're following his footsteps, we're in the right place. We're following the right path. So what are our applications here? Go out, go out in bold faith steps, just like Esther did, and trust that the Lord is going to catch you when you fall, that he is going to lift you to heights that you couldn't possibly imagine. And now, guys, we are going to close in a prayer. Obviously, you are welcome to pause my video and pray in your room or wherever you are, just by yourself. But I am going to lead us in a prayer, just as I do every video. Lord God, I thank you for this opportunity to come together over the, over the screen. I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are alive and that you are speaking to us. Help us to be brave and bold, just like Esther. Help us to take risks for your kingdom and to trust in you through it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. That is it for today's video, but of course, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for my next one out. And if you haven't seen it, I've got uh, vlogs and other videos that I do as well. So. Take a look at that and I will see you for the next upload. I love you all beautiful people. Continue to see God's will in your life. I love you and God bless. Bye.